Good afternoon. Just want to say thank you to all the veterans, the families, spouses, and members of each of the veterans' families here for coming out on this, once again, this snowy afternoon. Uh, this is our first ever Veterans Day program, which actually isn't on Veterans Day, but it's certainly during Veterans Week, and we want to thank you for braving the elements a little bit and coming out. At this time, if I could, direct your attention to both far ends of the gym for the presentation and participation of the colors this afternoon under the direction of veteran and Moose Lake staff member Mark Hollis, Moose Lake student and Life Scout Darby Hollis, along with local Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, and fifth graders. At this time, we ask you to stand, remove your hats, remain silent, Face the flags of the presentations of the colors enter the gym. Please remain standing through and join us. Thank you. Please be seated. My name is Craig Mitz. I'm the Angelus Lake Elementary School Principal. And I'm uh, certainly on behalf of Eric Rosero, uh, who kind of orchestrated and developed this program. Certainly want to welcome you and um, thank you for coming out. We're going to give you a, a, certainly a time of honoring and remembering as um, veterans, whether it was in time of conflict or not, that uh, we certainly recognize the people in this special week throughout the United States. Mary Rose asked me, you know, please be in charge of an introduction, and I really said, I really don't know what to say or do, but she said, I don't either, just kind of go with it. So uh, I kind of came up and I sat and um, thought of a couple things that I really, what do I want to say here? So what I did is I thought of two messages that I want to send. The first message is for the first group of people that I want to address, and that's you veterans. Uh, as a veteran myself, I understand the role the military has played in your life. You have given and made sacrifices for you, your family, and for your country. 
For your time, dedication, service, and commitment, we thank you and we owe you a debt of gratitude. Because my next message is for the next group of people that I want to address, and that's the Moose Lake students. Since we are a school and our world revolves around learning, I sent you this message, students of Moose Lake. I want you to carefully listen and learn something from our program today. Please keep the word respect in mind as we go through our program honoring our guests. For our veterans, our not famous television performers, they are not professional athletes, and they are not worldwide known as individuals. What they are, however, is they're Americans. They're Americans who have done something special for the rest of us. Continuing on with our introduction, I'd like to introduce two sixth grade students who have some readings for you. They are Emily Botsack and Gavin Ross. Jim Sanders, 
and Mark Collis. See here. Here comes great. And gentlemen, can I get two on either side of me? Can I get two on either side? Thank you. And gentlemen, if I can ask you first to um, yeah, come on over, thanks. Um, if we can have you first address our students and tell them what branch you were in, why you went in to serve, and what you took away from that service. Can we start with you? And your name, of course. First of all, hi students, and thanks for inviting us here today. And also all the other veterans and people here, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Ted Shaw, and uh, I was in the United States Air Force, and uh, why I joined, um, the time that I served was uh, 1970 to 1974, and it was during the Vietnam War. And it was a, a very unpopular war, a lot of unrest uh, throughout the nation. And it was a, a strange situation, not only was there protesting against the war, but there's a lot of protesting against um, veterans or people who served in that war. So it was a little different. Um, I don't think that has happened before that war, or I don't think it's happened after that war. And one of the um, students here in Moose Lake, his name was Merle Sarbola. And if you are in the library ever against one of the walls, there's a plaque about Merle. And uh, he was a very good friend of mine, and he was killed in action in Vietnam. I was a senior at the time. He was a year older than myself. So that affected a lot of uh, the senior boys in, in my class. And as the year progressed, it was in 1970 that I kind of joined. And I wanted to serve our nation and to serve not only the nation at large, but also the men and women that were already serving. And that was the reason that I joined. And the most memorable, I think you asked before, the most memorable event in the service I was stationed at uh, Kinsler Air Force Base at the time. It was a big SAC base up by Sault Ste. Marie. And I was out on the flight, flight line and I had been working on some transmitters, um, air to ground communication. And a large B-52 that was carrying nuclear warheads on it crashed on the runway. And I was watching it flip over and over again and parts flying all over. And I couldn't help thinking, with those nukes on board, what, what's going to happen? Will it be a flash and that's it? And <laughs> nothing else? But uh, with all the safety um, features that they have on, on nuclear warheads, nothing happened other than, unfortunately, the, the airmen. I think there was nine of them on board, lost their lives. So it was a very tragic day, but uh, luckily I didn't see a big flash for one second. But that was the memorable point. Uh, my name is Jim Sanders, uh, and I was in the Navy uh, from 1964 to 1967. And this is just the start of the Vietnam War. And I got lucky uh, because I was able to, um, you know, at first I wanted to go east coast to Europe, and so I put in my request after going to school, and they sent me to Pearl Harbor. So, and I was very happy with that. I spent a year in Pearl Harbor, and then I volunteered for Vietnam, and spent a year and a half off of North Vietnam on two different aircraft carriers. And for some of you kids, uh, you have to realize that an aircraft carrier is pretty big. Uh, we had 5,000 uh, servicemen on our ship. And you can just imagine how long you have to stand in line to eat. Uh, but it was really a good experience. And we visited all kinds of different ports uh, besides doing the, the military side of it. Um, the worst thing that I have ever noticed was this, uh, when an aircraft uh, that took off in the morning did not come back in the afternoon. And of course, they were shot down because they were um, bombing South Vietnam. 
And of course, uh, so there was a lot of bad things going on, but this is just the start of the Vietnam War. Um, so we were quite fortunate to be aboard ship and we didn't have to do the combat side of it. So, um, and of course, we got a chance to visit some foreign countries that we we'll never get to see, like Japan and Hong Kong, uh, the Philippines. I even got a chance to go to um, Australia. So I can't complain about my little bit of time when I was in the service. Um, and uh, I guess the best thing about uh, what I remember is, is that you know, when I first enlisted, I never thought of going to college. Uh, I just wanted to see the world. And luckily, I uh, qualified for the GI Bill. So when I got out, I went to college uh, from the benefits that I earned as a servitor. So uh, that was really special for me. So that's it. <laughs> My name is uh, Dean Paulson, and I uh, enlisted right after graduation in the summer of 1961. Uh, there was like five or six of us from my class that we looked forward to going into the service. I served in the Army from 1961 to 64, and then Army Guard for four years, and then 16 years in the, in the Air Guard. Uh, my most memorable experience in in the service was, there was several thousand of us that flew out of Fort Riley, Kansas to Berlin. You, I don't know if you've read about the Cuban Missile Crisis, that uh, Russians were setting up uh, missile silos and missiles just off our coast of Florida. And we went to Berlin and that's when President Kennedy told Khrushchev, you turn them ships around or we're going to blow you out of the water. Well, we were about two miles away from, from uh, the Berlin, Berlin Wall. And it diffused, it diffused uh, the war or the Cold War in Berlin. And uh, thank goodness because otherwise we wouldn't have been here right now. Why did I go on the service? There was... Uh, Lots of people in our family that went in, and we just look forward to going in and uh, doing, spending our time in the military. And I think it's a good experience. It gives you a level of maturity and experience. And I think the biggest thing I remember from the military, it shows you how to judge people, how to work with people. And it, it, it was a good experience. It's, uh, you learn a lot. What's my name? I have a hard time talking about this. That's what I cry bear with me. One thing that I said, I'm the kid here. 1970? I was in third grade. <laughs> I was born in 62. Right? But people often ask me why I believe. I get to see it every day. Kids, when I talk to the classes, I tell them, you realize girls cannot go to school in a lot of countries, let alone be a teacher. It's against the law. And they want to go to school. That's why I stepped up 19 years old. But they actually share something really important. It was a when I was in. You guys saw Darby standing up here. He's my son. I stood on the pier holding his hand. 
and watch his mom pull away and go to war on the ship. That was hard. We hear all about what we went through, the military, the veterans, but our families dealt with it too. The separations, the fears. When you call home, you get to hear your mom or your wife, how excited they are that you're still alive because they didn't know. That's who we need to think as well. We understand. We, we put ourselves on the line. But our families pay the price too. And they still do today. Thank you. veterans have at many of their functions? Yes, many of you heard about that. This is a special table here. Some of you can see it from right here. It's a special table about people they want to remember and never forget. Am I right? Okay, and, you're, and they're here to tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, my start with the ceremony for the MIAs and POWs, I'd like to give a little information about uh, uh, MIAs and POWs. Uh, MIA is missing in action, and POW is prisoner of war. Um, I'll give you a little stats. Uh, these are current stats as of uh, today. I went on site and uh, pulled up what our MIA um, numbers are. Um, still from World War II, there are 79,000 missing in action. The Korean War, 7,500 still missing in action. From the Vietnam War, there's 1,600 missing in action. During the Cold War, there are still 126 servicemen missing in action. From the Iraq theater, there are five missing in action. Three from Desert Storm and two from Iraqi Freedom. There's one other individual missing in action and this is from Operation El Dorado um, that happened in Libya. I think this was in the early 1980s. So all total, of today, there are 88,000, I'll round it up, 88,000 still missing in action. Um, a lot of these individuals were POWs. They don't have a count of how many were. Um, we probably never will know that uh, perished in prisons in foreign lands. And that is the main reason why we still do this ceremony and honor those individuals at uh, Legion events and uh, I would believe uh, also at uh, um, other military events that happen. Um, we don't want to forget those 88,000 that are unaccounted for. That's a lot of service people and a lot of families and over a long period of time. Um, I'm going to give just an example of the people that were found this year in foreign lands. There are a total of 40 MIAs that were found in 2014 throughout the world. And I'm just going to read three of them from three different wars. This is Captain Lilo. Leland F. Smith, U.S. Army, Company K, 35th Infantry, Infantry Regiment, 25th Infantry Division, 
was lost November 28, 1950, in North Korea. He was accounted for on November 8, 2014. He will be buried with full military honors. The second one, Captain Richard W. Vincent, U.S. Marine Corps, Company D, 2nd Battalion, 18th Marines, 2nd Marine Division, was lost November 20th, 1943, in Tarawa. He was accounted for October 21st, 2014. He would be buried with full military honors. The third individual, Staff Sergeant James L. Van Bendigum, U.S. Army, Company B, 1st Battalion, 12th Infantry Regiment, the 4th Infantry Division, was lost July 12, 1967, in South Vietnam. He was accounted for October 17, 2014. He will be buried with full military honors. Now, there's 37 other individuals that were found this year, and the nation will continue to try to find what happened to those other well, 88,000. Um, and they are still finding them from the Second World War. It's, it's quite a worldwide effort, but to the families that are alive yet, it means everything to them. From there, uh, we'll start with the ceremony. This table before you is a place of honor. It is set for one. This table is a way of symbolizing the fact that members of our profession of arms are missing from our midst. They are commonly called POWs or MIAs. We call them brothers. They are unable to be with us this evening, so we remember them. This table is set for one, is small symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his oppressors. Remember, this tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their, co their country's call to arms. Remember, the single red rose displayed in a vase reminds us of the families and loved ones of our comrades in arms who keep the faith awaiting for their return. Remember. The red ribbon tied so prominently on the vase is reminiscent of the red ribbon worn upon the lapel in breasts of thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to, to demand a proper accounting of our missing. Remember. The candle, symbolizing the upward reach of the unconquerable spirit. Remember. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate. Remember. There is salt upon the bread plate, symbolizing the family's tears as they wait. Remember. The Bible serves to remind us of the comfort of faith offered to those who face seemingly insurmountable challenges. And it also reminds us of our country being founded on the principle of one nation under God. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us this night. Remember. The chair. The chair is empty. They are not here. Remember. Remember all of you who serve with them and call them comrades, who depend upon their might and aid and relied upon them for surely they have not forsaken you. Remember. Remember until the day they come home. Remember.
And now we'll all just take a moment of silence and remember somebody. Representation 
of all of the thanks that were written by all of the students here today. We just took a little smattering from each grade and they're here to share them with you. Thank you, veterans, for serving our country, risking your lives, and protecting us from danger. We are thankful for your service. Thank you, veterans, for serving our country. Thank you for helping others. Thank you for being brave and courageous. Thank you, veterans, for protecting us and serving our country. Thank you for our freedom and for being heroes. Thank you for serving in the war. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for helping America, you are brave. Thank you for protecting me, I feel safe. Thank you for freedom and America. Dear veterans, thank you for saving our country. I'm proud, I'm lucky I am an American. Dear veterans, thank you for saving our country and being brave. Thank you for being loyal. Thank you for helping our people. Thank you for being tough. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for saving our lives. Thank you for serving our country. You are a hero. You are a superstar. Thank you for your hard work, for fighting for our freedom. Thank you for being there when we needed you. We are all proud of you. God bless you. Thank you for serving in war. We love you. You are our hope. You are our hope. This is a, this is a small gift to a brave man. You are our star. God bless you. Thank you for risking your life for ours. Thank you for giving us freedom. Thank you so much for serving our country. You are amazing. You risk your life for us. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you for making sacrifice for us. Thank you for protecting our country. Roses are red, violets are blue. You can, we are, you are my hero. We love you. Thank you for serving and protecting our country. The, United States of America. Thank you for putting our lives before your lives. Dear veterans, thank you for serving our country and for battling for peace. Thank you for risking your life for a peaceful country. Dear veterans, thank you for protecting our land. I would not be here if you had not protected me and you are my hero for protecting our country. Thank you for standing free. And thank you for your participating in war, Navy, or even the Air Force or military. Dear veterans, thank you for serving our country because if you didn't risk your life for trying to make the world a better place, we would not have freedom or anything we have today. Thank you for making the world a better place. Veterans are wonderful. They are brave, strong, and have lots of courage. They fight for us and our freedom. Two of my grandpas have served in World War II. They would tell me stories all the time. It is special to have that in my family. They told me a lot. Even if you're 
not related to a veteran. You should still honor them because you're alive and free because of them. Thank you, veterans who have served or are still serving. We will always remember those who have served. Thank you, veterans, for giving us the freedom and the right to make our own decisions. I don't know what it would be like not to make my own choices, but I know Americans wouldn't like it. All veterans and their families have sacrificed something, whether it was their homes or even their lives. But we must be proud of the sacrifices they have made, because they are what make us the USA. Thank you for giving me and everyone freedom and to stop conflict of the world of the world to bring freedom and peace. You're the reason there's America. I'm thankful for veterans because they gave up their freedom to give us freedom and to live in peace. They put their lives at risk for us. Thank you for protecting us and giving us freedom and for just being brave. Thank you for giving up on a peaceful life to protect our freedom. Thank you for serving. You are a huge inspiration for everyone. Thank you for bravely protecting our country and saving us from all things bad. Dear veterans, thank you for risking your life to serve our country. It really means a lot to us. Thank you for serving our country because without you, we could never be what we are now, and that's free. Thank you for putting your life on the line so I can sleep soundly at night. Thank you for your courage and service to our nation. You have given so much for us. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. That's too emotional. Okay. Thank you for serving and protecting us. Thank you for sacrificing your life and freedom for us, for strangers all across the world. Thank you for all that you did just for us to be free. Thank you for your service. Your sacrifice has made a difference and we extend our heartfelt thanks. God bless you every day. Thank you for doing something not a lot of people would do. Thank you for all you've done for me and everyone else. You are special and great for help and great for helping out our country. Thank you for serving and all thanks to your families for letting you. Thank you for everything you have done to protect our country and the people in it. You have given up a lot and nobody can repay you for that. This land is your land. We can all stand together and sing that one. It's in your program. Concluding our program this afternoon, we sincerely hope that you've enjoyed your time here 
at our school and appreciated the program of remembering, honoring, and thanking. I just want to recognize and give a special thank you if you could stand up, Mrs. Mary Rose Barrow, for making this possible. And kids, if you could give a standing ovation for our special guests here, our veterans. Refreshments that will be served, so please stay a few minutes after and enjoy that. If you could, veterans here on the floor, if, please just be seated. We need to get our elementary kids back to their classrooms because we're dismissing them in 15 minutes here. Kids, thank you for attending, and remember no stealing the cookies or refreshments out there that are for our guests, okay? Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for coming.
This is from 10th grade, I think. No, that's class of 20, 2010. Oh, you don't have a picture of him? 